Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. Before we get into what we're talking about today, today's episode, like all of them, are brought to you by eForms.com. What did I say? I said eForms.com. That's eForms.com. If you need a form, let's say you need a will, or let's say you need a power of attorney, or a loan agreement, or just anything legal that you need a form for, go to eForms.com. And don't hire somebody like me. Don't reinvent the wheel. They've got them for you, and it's going to cost you next to nothing, and you'll be glad you did. It takes all the guesswork out of it, and then you've got something professional, and you're off to the races with whatever you need. So that's eforms.com. So, uh, all right, so let's get into what, what we're talking about today. We're talking about Shyla LaBeouf. LaBeouf, LaBeef, where's the LaBeef? Shyla is uh, an actor, and he's known for being kind of difficult. Now, he had a girlfriend, FKA Twigs, filed a lawsuit in 2020. And I think it is still pending, if I'm not mistaken. But he admitted on camera, he was on John Bernthal's podcast, The Real Ones. So you need to, you should check his podcast out too. But he talked about the treatment that he put this girl under. In other words, he treated her like shit. And, and let me just tell you something about domestic violence. It never pays. It is the most childish thing a fucking guy can do, Uh, or really a woman. I mean, both people can can be abused, but it's mostly guys, let's face it. And it's the most childish thing anybody can get themselves into, usually driven and fueled by drugs or alcohol. But it, it is just, if you can't solve your problems, but with calm, rational discourse, then get the fuck out of there, Uh, whether you're a man or a woman. So let's, let's just see what he has to say, and, and we'll come back around to it. And this is what created the insecurity and the jealousy that put hands on this woman. Did you hear how he put that? He didn't put the hands on that woman. The jealousy and the security put his hands on the woman. I don't like that. But what I do like is, I, you know, accountability, and it seems like I've read some articles on it. It seems like he's taking accountability. Let's look at another clip. And what it is now, like what my purpose is now, you know, I, I, I need to be useful. And when I look at this Me Too environment, there's not a whole lot of dudes that are taking accountability. You know, I fucked up bad, bad, like crash and burn type shit, hurt a lot of people. And, um, and I'm fully aware of that. And I'm going to owe for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. And I also don't have that feeling about... Uh, the woman who's accused me all this shit like I did in the beginning. When it first landed, I thought, man, um, you know, there was thing I wanted to hit Twitter and be like, look, I got receipts, this, that, that, but this. So in all honesty, if this is my client, I'd tell him to shut the fuck up. I mean, why are you, you got a pending lawsuit. They've got a trial date of uh, April, 2023. You know, why are you, I can understand why he's doing it. I mean, cause he, he's trying to rehab his image. And, and here's the thing: when you are when you're this guy, you you walk a fine line, right? Because a if you are you doing this because you just want to rehab your image, or are you doing this because you really mean it? If you're doing it because you really mean it, you don't need to do that on a podcast, right? You don't need to do that, you know, on TV or at a pub. But you're a public figure, and I and so I I get why he's doing that. And I just you know, and we'll get more into this interview, but. But it's just we'll see. You know, are you are you making amends to the people that you hurt? That's that's really the the biggest thing. So, but not that. But this. But not that. And the reality is, uh, all of that shit is unimportant. The reality is that she saved my fucking life, dude. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I uh, she's like a like some kind of sage or like a, I don't know. She she's a, she's a um, a saint for me little solace for somebody who's been abused you want to hear these kinds of things and so to the extent that he's doing this i i i applaud him but you know it is suspect because whenever anybody does this why are they doing it you know because had she not intervened in my life and not created the avenue for me to experience ego death i'd either have a really mediocre existence ego death and maybe that and i and my understanding is that he's in kind of a men's group 
and uh, where they, um, they they go for a ride, they go to the beach, they do Zoom meetings, you know, for accountability. And to the extent that he's doing that, I, I applaud him. And sometimes you need to hit that rock bottom. Sometimes you really need to, to know that you are just a piece of human shit because of the way you're treating people. Because, you know, you can't fucking do that. You can't treat people like shit and expect to have a decent, untumultuous life. Because if you, if you treat people like shit, you get what you give, you know? So I mean, remember when I was telling you build, 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 build your relationships, build the love in your life. Guess what? If you build love by giving love, it'll come back 10 motherfucking fold. Absolutely it will created the avenue for me to experience ego death i'd either have a really mediocre existence or i'd be dead in full antithesis of being a friend is walking away i am not going to walk away mm -hmm. like i am always going to love you i am always going to support you mm -hmm. but no matter what the the case is my job as your friend is to in whatever way you allow me to or you allow me to be a pro part of that process is to make sure one you never do it again mm -hmm. make sure two that 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 you're in a healthy process and, and, and number three that i'm a support system for why you're going through that mm -hmm. yeah i mean i got amends to make i got a long list of people that i need to make amends to and so um what i want to say to those people is i i one i get it you know well and here's the thing when, when you've been abusive to somebody they don't want to fucking talk to you and they shouldn't want to talk to you. So he doesn't probably have, and especially if there's a lawsuit that's pending, he probably doesn't have direct access to somebody to tell them, you know. But making amends is part of treatment. And if you're going through either whether it's chemical dependency treatment or uh, anger management or whatever, it's it's part of that process. You know, it doesn't seem, you know, when it first hit, it was like, you know, I wanted to air it out and talk about specifics and like none of it really matters. You know, I, I hurt that. Doesn't matter to you. I mean, none of it really matters. Yes, it does matter. Those specifics do matter. A woman, you know, and in the process of doing that, I hurt many other people and many other people before that woman. Uh, and many other people before that woman. You know, and one of the things I have a friend of mine who actually was on a movie set with him. And they said, you know, he gets, he's one of these method actors, you know, they, you know, the kind of people that they are the person, you know, during the filming of the movie, you know, and then the, you can't talk to them, you know, except for you're talking to the other person, whatever, you know, artists are, are who they are, you know, and some of them are absolute bad shit crazy. I'm not saying that he is necessarily, but these are the, he's saying the right things. I was so competitive. My acting wasn't collaborative. It was competitive. Mm -hmm. It was a sport. Mm -hmm. And my life was this way. Mm -hmm. And this is what created the insecurity. So my life is competitive. You know, and it, you know, life should not be competitive. You, you know, there should be times where you're competitive. When I'm in a courtroom and I see the other side, like in this trial that I just won, um, the whole fucking trial, I was given our, our opposing counsel so much shit. It was so fun, and I was just calling him Tony the Tiger and, you know, whatever. And, it, you know, it was good nature, ribbing, and it was competitive. But when it comes time to your personal life, somebody that you love so much, you should not be competitive with them at all. And the jealousy that put hands on this woman. Mm -hmm. The jealousy that put that put this hand. Let's, let's, let's watch that again for a second. My life was this way, mm -hmm. and this is what created the insecurity and the jealousy that put hands on this woman. Mm -hmm. It's what created the security, the insecurity, and the jealousy that put hands on that woman. Really? So it wasn't you. It was the insecurity and the jealousy. You know, it's a way of distancing. That that's why I get suspect of stuff like this, because. You know, he's got no emotion, and he's he's really just rehabbing his image. The the man that was involved in that relationship was co constantly comparing himself to other people. Mm -hmm. The man that was in that relationship. So he's saying he's not that guy. And the problem when you do that is, and, and they, I see this all the time in court, where people, you know, they distance themselves from, from the true acceptance of responsibility, right? Because that's, that's one of the hallmarks of getting somebody a sentence reduced. When they accept responsibility, the judge looks at it and says, and how is that evidenced? You know, it's evidenced by the actions that you take, by the remorse that you feel. 
And he's talking about that guy. And I was a dishonest person in that I was wearing this mask. You know, I, I've gotten cold sores my whole life. Got them from my mother. I get two cold sores a year when I'm stressed out or I'm sick. I never told any of my sexual partners about getting cold sores. Okay, if he fucked his mother and got cold sores from his mother, that's another issue altogether. But if you fuck somebody and give them cold sores on their fucking genitalia, that isn't from stress. That's called herpes. Never. And that's something, when you talk about like, how do you, what, you know, how do you, how do you talk to these people who you done fucked over? Like there's certain shit you can't clean up. Yeah. You know, you can't. It's like my wife. It's like, it's not sexy to be married and have a kid with a dude who's like this public uh, abuser of women. You know, I, I, sometimes I, 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 you know, I, I'll go look up, uh, I'll go look up like the, the response to my woman's film. You know, she had a movie came out not recently and like, there'll be comments like, you know, I don't fuck with this woman because she fucks with him. You know, that that's heavy. You know, that my wife is like. Well, deal with it. I mean, if you have a good looking wife and, you know, so, I mean, you see what he's doing. He's, he's putting it back on himself like that. Oh, look what I have to deal with because, you know, there she's, she's getting negative comments because of me. So woe is me. That, that this is how fucking abusers are though. You know, it, it, they, what they do, they don't, they never take fucking responsibility. And that's why they make the absolute worst clients on the fucking planet. Nothing, ever, no rules ever apply to them. They're always calling. They're all bitching. You know, that's why do you think I don't do, you know, divorce work, family work? It's just like, it's so awful when you get these guys who, oh, but she's a bitch and this and that, you know, and, oh, ugh, it makes me want to just throw up. How does that make you feel? Terrible, dog. Ter yeah. Explain terrible. How do you think it makes her feel? Like what terrible, like like you converge into the kind of shame that makes you unproductive. Mm -hmm. Like you can make yourself. Is that unfair? Uh, no, it's not unfair. You don't think? No, it's not unfair. The other examples that we've had of how to navigate something like this, which is to go after the woman or try to like win a court case or like get back into a fucking movie yeah. or like get back on it all. You know, yeah. my purpose, and I mean this with every fiber of my being, is to be instructive with my life so that I can be a an advertisement, like a billboard for a principled way of living. And that this shit on the other side of being. Uh, Newsflash, um, Charlie, you're never going to be a billboard for a decent way of living. Being where I was is still fucking sexy. It's still glittery. It's still fun. To say that you deserve love when, on paper, no, you don't. You know what I mean? Listen, bro. Like, for me, there are few things as ugly as putting your hands on a woman. What did I tell you guys? I said there's no fucking excuse for you putting hands on a woman. And you know what? There are these stragglers out there who are going to say, well, what if she comes at me with a baseball bat? What if she does this? You know what? You're still going to be the one going to jail. There's other ways of handling a problem than putting your hands on a woman. I've never done it, never would in a million years. And neither should you. What else is, what is, there's nothing worse. I remember I used to come into AA all the time and put my hand up like, yeah, I just got in a fight with a cop. I grew up on Easy e This shit's sexy, you know what I mean? I used to put my hand up like. I mean, this guy's been in movies and has had privilege. Give me a break. That shit's sexy, man. I just beat a cop. You know, give me a fucking break. I, I'm not I'm not buying anything he says. It's like he's another character in one of his own little scripted cobweb brain of his. Like, oh, I just flipped a car, you know, I just got in a fight with with a, this or that. And there was like this faux, it was like, it was like, I romanticized that kind of shit. 100%. When you come back in and you raise your hand and you don't even need to raise your hand because dude's already read it. Your baggage already showed up at the hotel before you got there. People know about you. There's nothing sexy about. People know about you dealing with and that's what makes me useful it's also why i go to strictly men's meetings because you don't hear about dudes talk about what we're talking about at a mixed meeting because very quickly once women are involved i probably wouldn't be able to talk like this with you if there was a woman here because and that's the problem you know that is the fucking problem right there it's called accountability you know you should be able to be yourself whether you're in front of a group of women or a group of men and I can tell you this, 
I have absolutely no problem with who I am in front of women. And, you know, and the reason he, the reason he can't is because they would shame the fuck out of him. Right away, the the little boy in me would start like curating again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and when I'm here with you, I can forget about that also and all this shit. It takes a certain kind of dude to be able to open a person up like this mm -hmm. and be receptive of it. Mm -hmm. And also like show up and look the dragon in the eye knowing that there's purpose. Yeah. Like I'm purpose driven yes. here. Yes. I'm willing to eviscerate myself and emasculate myself yes. and like... He isn't... Okay, I'm, I'm, that's enough of this. Okay. I mean, I, I'm... I'm this is just PR. That's all this is. I'm willing to emasculate myself. I'm willing to, you know, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. He never talks, honestly, about how he made anybody else feel. It's all about him. So I, I, this, is, this is a half-hearted attempt at public rehab. You know, if he's, in, if he's in AA, I applaud him. If he's sober, I fucking applaud him because I've never respected uh, sobriety more than watching family members go through it. And it, it's not easy to do. And so to the extent that, you know, he's got an issue with chemicals or whatever, but, you know, one of the things he did say in this interview that I did think was, was spot on is had he been just Shyla, the non-actor, he wouldn't have gone any away with any of that. The cops would have been called. One of the reasons that people don't call the cops on people like this is because, guess what? Okay, then I'm no longer associated. This is my only connection to the film industry. This is my only connection to glitz and glamour. So I'm going to take this shit, uh, you know, and, and you just can't have it. Can't have it. How did, how did uh, Robert De Niro said in, in uh, Goodfellas? Can't have it. Can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have fucking abuse. Doesn't mean you can't be redeemed afterwards. Doesn't mean that you're not worthy of love afterwards god i mean what is this is a men's counter it just turned into this episode is turning into a, a men's encounter group and you know and i don't really give a shit because i you know i want to talk to every guy out there never put your hands on a woman if you feel like you need to do that walk out of the room go get some fresh air go for a run go take your aggression out on on the track you know don't you don't need to do this and and that's why i really hate hate domestic cases Unless it's really clear that the other side is is at fault, and I've had those cases too. So this is just our our reaction to Shia LaBeouf. Uh, is it LaBeau or is it LaBeouf? I don't even know. But Shia is an actor in Hollywood, and um, and he he is who he is. And let let's hope the things he's talking about are sincere. And that he is, you can tell he's a fucking narcissist. I mean, that's one thing that comes through with this more than anything else. But let's hope that his uh, his life has changed, you know, and uh, because you don't you don't need to do that. So this is Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you follow uh, us on Instagram and on Twitter. Follow us on Patreon. Subscribe to Patreon. We're doing some good work there. Stop yourself snitching. We'll see you next time on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, believe it's at my God.